Shit! I forgot the hat! So I just came from the gym to mentally prepare myself for this video. Nah, I'm just kidding. Last week, I did a video about racism. Let's just say the response was a bit mixed. So I thought to myself, why leave it at one shitstorm? Let's make it two. Yes, you have read the title. We are doing LGBTQ representation in Magic the Gathering. Fuck yeah, I'm hyped. I hope you're hyped. I hope you're typing your hate speech comment already down there. Or you love it. I don't know, but I really wanted to make this video. So fuck yeah, let's do this. Yeah, so on a more serious note, after I did the racism video, racism in Magic the Gathering, the banned cards, you know, you've seen it, probably not, I don't know. I did some research and I was looking at news outlets and forums and Reddit and whatever. So while I was browsing the New York Times article, I think, I found out that there were already homosexual, transsexual and non-binary magic characters and I found that really interesting because I genuinely, 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 genuine, didn't know about that so I thought I was gonna look into it and take you guys with me on that wonderful journey into the world of the queer people. So let's dive right into it. First up we have... Kinaios, Kinaios and Tiro of Melitis. These guys were, as far as I know, the first representation of LGBTQ people in Magic. And they first came in the form of the statues, which are called... The Guardians of Melitis. So it's a pretty interesting concept to me because if you take a look at how homosexuality was generally perceived in ancient Greece or Rome, you will find out that there were some weird misconceptions, but it was generally more well accepted than the rest of the ancient world or the rest of, let's say, medieval Europe or some shit like that. So. They were pretty far for their times. I think in Greece it was like sex between two men was not generally frowned upon, but the passive part should be younger for the reason being that the passive part is associated with a loss of manliness. So if two adult men in ancient Greece society would have sex with each other, the passive person would be looked uh, upon as the uh, demasculized, more feminine. So it was kind of frowned upon, but if you take into account how far back that goes, it's actually not too bad. So having Kinaios and Tiro be from a set that was inspired by that period is kind of fitting and is a nice little historical touch which gives them a bit more depth in my opinion. There is also the relationship between Ral Saurek and Tomic Ronaf, both from Ravnica. It's apparently uh, featured in a novel. And the relationship needs to be kept secret because uh, Ral obviously is the Izzet Guildmaster and Tomic Rona I think is a high ranking uh, Arz Arzov, Arzov uh, guild member. That's as far as I know but they are in a relationship with each other and they actually have a piece of cloth attached to their uh, respective wardrobes which ki is kind of an easter egg like showing their affection even if it's secret they're showing they're showing their affection for each other and that is featured on the card artwork and i think it's a, it's a nice touch it was handled pretty well i haven't read the novels i don't know how it was handled there but like just looking at it without the novels just the flavor of the cards it's pretty cool up next nissa and chandra which are not so let me explain from a story point of view Nissa and Chandra kind of had a thing going on 
for them, which was then eventually killed off by wizards in the War of the Spark novel, I think. And what people are saying about that is wizards is queer baiting, which is like when you want to make your characters appear gay without them actually being gay to attract a more diverse audience without actually committing yourself to making a statement. So Wizards did that and I found out about this on a forum article from Albatross. It was on the... I forgot the name. I'm going, I'm going to include a lot of links into the description. Everything I talk about in this video will be in the description so you can look into it as much as you want. So they did that, which people were pissed about and honestly I gotta say, you shouldn't do shit like that. If you wanna make him bisexual, make him bisexual, there's no problem in that. Um, if you wanna make them openly uh, lesbian, there also shouldn't really be a problem with that, but be fucking honest. Like, I get it that you invent characters and kind of make up their personality as you go because it's cardboard and they don't have much depth when you just draw that shit on the card. So what I'm trying to say is they should not have retconned this relationship. And apparently there is a Innistrad, Shadows of an Innistrad short story with uh, two trackers. I think they're called Alina. I have not read the story, I have... I, I, I read a few paragraphs, but it seemed really boring, but apparently there's two lesbian characters in there as well. But that's like, pretty fucking minor. Anyway, up next on shit that was explored in stories, uh, there is Alesha. And when Alesha, the Khan of the Mardu Horde, was first released, she was like just, just a fucking card. And she later did get a story on the official website, which is called... I don't know what it's called, but it's about her earning her name. So Alesha was born a man or a boy or male and... When the time came for her to choose her name because she found glory in battle, she chose the name of her grandmother because she just felt that that was her and that was the name she wanted to go with. They apparently just accepted it and went along with it. I actually read that story because it was really good. Uh, later on there is a orc who struggles to find his identity and he's, he's better at saving people than killing dragons but that is where he shines. And he was also an orc that insulted Alesha as a boy who pretends to be a girl, something like that. Which does raise questions with how much did they accept it? Like, is your Khan? Your Khan has been ruling over you for some years already and you're still... You're still going like, you're just, a, you're just a boy pretending to be a girl. So, I don't know, like, if you take the story as a whole, how well fitting that is. But it serves like a narration, kind of a narration point of view. Narration, narration, narrator. Narration. Fuck my life. Fuck this language. Uh, the Alesha story is good. Alesha is pretty cool as a character. And she is, as far as I can tell, generally well liked and... Also, it was really well executed. This is the moment where I just realized that the script for this video was not fully finished at the moment of me filming this. So let's go off the fucking rails here, okay? Up next, there is non-binary magic characters. I just had these laying around. I thought it was kind of cute. Ashiok. The card was first released at Theros? Yeah, Theros, I think. Or Theros Returns. Yeah, it's just gonna put it there. And Ashiok is apparently the first non-binary character in Magic the Gathering. Ashiok identifies neither as male or female, which is kind of not relevant because she's a nightmare. Like, she's an embo em embodiment of a nightmare. I found a good article of a non-binary blogger explaining why people like Karn or Ashiok are not the best representations of non-binaryism in Magic. But yes, still, Ashiok is still a good step in a good direction and it could have been executed more. 
Yeah, with more of a focus on her being non-binary, but actually, I mean, she's a fucking nightmare, so I don't know. Uh, up next, we have uh, Halar, Halar, Haler, uh, the fire. Fire Fletcher. Halar is really interesting because they got a explanation card, lore card, I don't know what these are called, which actually stated that they don't use gender specific pronouns because the elvish language has that. And that's pretty cool. Uh, we don't actually find out about their pronouns because magic doesn't really explore languages. But that was the first card which the fact that the character was non-binary actually mattered. And I think that's pretty dope. I think it's a good representation and it's a lot closer to what it actually means to be non-binary than Ashiok. While Ashiok is also pretty dope. If there is anything I missed here, which I probably did, uh, make sure to inform me in the comments. Uh, make sure to tell me if it's important. If there is LGBTQ characters in Magic. I think it's pretty important. I think it's pretty cool. But I always want to hear your opinion. And let's have a good and open discussion. Not the shit that you guys pulled last time, okay? Yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching. And have a great fucking day.